Hey now, it's Friday, Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. So if I'm not here today, I'm out of the office today, but you probably noticed that by now. Some of you, some of you probably didn't because you're not paying attention anyway. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, do a little bell ringer today, a little head puzzle lesson on uh, DNA replication. And then, um, yeah, some notes about replication of DNA, how DNA copies itself. That's what we're kind of doing now. And then, uh, yeah, it'll be the weekend and party and party. And yeah, fun, fun, fun. Looking forward to the weekend. Okay, so uh, remember, we've got three things on the agenda today, My, most days. There are three things you want to accomplish. One is the bell ringer. Two is Ed Puzzle lesson on DNA replication. Three are the notes on DNA replication. All right, capiche? Bueno. Mr. Kovacs Glass. It's Mr. Kovacs Glass. You might learn on time. It's Mr. Kovacs Glass. He's interested too. It's Mr. Kovacs Glass. And he's super cool. It's Mr. Kovacs Glass. Now you know the story. In 1962, a Nobel Prize was given for the discovery of genes. Get it? Genes. Pretty <laughs> funny. Actually, that's not actually true. It wasn't for the discovery of genes. Um, it was genes, or the idea of genes was, dis was discovered um, at least 100 years prior by a guy named Gregor Mendel, and we'll talk about that later. But the idea that how DNA works in terms of genes it was discovered. And um, that, of course, was the work of Watson, James Watson, Francis Crick, and Ms. Rosalind Franklin. And they did Nobel Prize winning work in the study of DNA. And by now you know the story Right, Rosalind took the picture. This picture was important. She called it picture 51. It showed the Watson and Crick that the shape of the DNA molecule was a double helix. It was a spiral staircase, a, a rope ladder kind of shape, twisted up. And what was important about it was the rungs of the ladder. The rungs were made up of nucleotides, nucleotides. And they're, what was surprising was that nucleotides are quite simple. There are only four of them. Right, four of them to make up the rungs of the ladder. Four nucleotides. They are A, T, C, and G. By now you've not got those, and you know that apples in the trees, cars in the garage. Right? That's uh, A goes with T, G goes with C, and that's really um, important for making DNA so simple that it can easily replicate. And so today we're talking about replication or copying itself. Right? DNA copies itself pretty easily, it just unzips, all right? So you got a strand, unzips, matches the A's with T's, G's with C's, and now you have two strands that are identical, all right? See, look at them, they're the same. A with T, G with C, right? So you start with one, you unzip it, A's with T's, G's with C's. Yeah, you just unzip, match A's with T's, G's with C's, then you have two identical strands, easy, right? In fact, DNA does this quite a bit. Uh, copies itself all well, all the time, um, especially when it's time for cells to reproduce. They need to copy themselves, right? They first need to copy all their DNA, right? So you got it now. There's there's four chemicals, and they always pair up. Adenine goes with thymine. Apple in the tree. Guanine goes with cytosine. Car, car in the garage. That kind of thing, right? And so when it's time for replication, you need to unzip that DNA molecule. You've got to break these. These are hydrogen bonds between those molecules. This, they're not very difficult to break. They're, they're not really strong bonds. That's why we draw them with little dots here. They're called hydrogen bonds. And there's an enzyme that does it called um, DNA helicase. Helicase is an enzyme that unwinds the double helix by breaking apart this hydrogen bonds between the bases, helicase, right? So DNA helicase comes in here and splits, right? splits the strand, and then you match A's with T's, G's with C's. Right, here's helicase, a little triangle here, splitting the strand, and then you have some other um, enzymes. You've got what's called DNA polymerase. Polymer, ACE, DNA, make, it's the enzyme that makes DNA polymers out of monomers, right? And there's two of them, one on each strand. And then um, 
yeah, there's some other enzymes involved called primase and those kinds of things, but you just need to know that helicase splits the DNA molecule and then polymerase just copies or sticks, I'm sorry, A's to T's, G's to C's. And what's interesting about it is you get two new strands, one strand, uh, in each new strand, half of it is from the old strand, right? Half of it is from the old strand and half of it is a new strand, okay? So where are mutations likely to happen? Mutations are likely to happen on the new strand, the one being copied, right? So that's where the new copies are because the old one is there already. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so DNA polymerase, helicase, all involved in, R in DNA replication. Replication, all right? And cells do replication um, during what's called the S phase of their life, and we'll get into that a little later, but um, yeah, we'll talk about that later. You have a little DNA replication, right? You've got to unzip the DNA molecule. You do that with helicase. And then you've got to pair up A's with T's, G's with C's. You do that with DNA polymerase. Two enzymes found in the nucleus of cells that help to replicate DNA. And of course, once the DNA is copied, then the cell can actually split itself into two. And you'll have two new cells that have the same DNA that the cell that you started with. Right? And that's what it's all about. It's passing on genetic information from cell to cell to cell to cell. If there are any changes in the copying, like any mistakes made in the copying, that's when mutations get passed on from cell to cell. Sometimes those mutations are meaningless, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. And we'll talk a lot about different types of mutations as we go. Anyway, today you got bell ringer, Ed puzzle, notes, weekend. All right, let's do it.